Well, that's correct, Sarah. But I think that if you look at what's happened this year, I'm already very intrigued by how emerging markets are proving to be quite resilient. Had you told me at the beginning of this year that the U.S. stock market's going to be down 20 percent, how much do you think emerging markets are going to be down? I think most people would have answered by saying they'll be down 30 percent because that's the relationship. Instead, this year, at least, emerging markets are outperforming. And if you look at the world's 10 best performing uh, markets in general, all 10 are emerging markets. So I think that it is very difficult for any asset class to generate positive returns, particularly in the equity space where the U.S. St uh, stock market is behaving this way. But the relative resilience of emerging markets at a time when you expect, as you said, um, emerging markets to do poorly is, I think, something, uh, something worthy of note and worth asking the question that why is this happening? And my answer is that the fundamentals of emerging markets mm. have improved significantly compared to the last few years. Well, let's get into that. But why isn't it that, that they're more tied to China now than they ever have been, than, than they are maybe with the U.S., and that China doesn't have the same inflation problems, and they do have a sort of pent-up demand story to get to once they get rid of all the lockdowns from COVID? Yes, that's correct. But I think that the links with China have been weakening a lot. Um, despite the price action that we have seen today with the carnage in the commodity markets, a lot of these emerging markets are dependent on commodity exports. And even as China has been quite soft demand-wise over the last uh, few months, uh, many commodity prices and even uh, commodity exporting countries have done much better. So I think the link with China is weakening because what's happening here is that just how supply constrained the commodity markets have been. So the few nations that have been able to produce commodities uh, have done quite well. And those currencies have also done relatively well, today's carnage notwithstanding. So I think that the link mm. of China to many of these emerging markets has been has weakening diminished. as China has turned much more inward. So what, which countries do you like the best right now? And what, what is a good way for investors to play them? Should they buy the ETFs, for instance, that track those markets? Well, I think the ETF is a very wrong way to do it because the ETF is very concentrated in three countries, which is basically China, Korea, and Taiwan. That's nearly 60%. And you have so many other emerging markets out there. So it has to be much more specific. Talking about country examples, I like Indonesia quite a bit. I like Southeast Asia. In general, I think Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam all look quite interesting to me. I think some of the commodity exporting markets of Latin America, such as Brazil, uh, especially with the currency where it is now, and even Mexico, I think look interesting. And there's always India, you know, which is a country that consistently disappoints the optimists and the pessimists. Uh, but I think that foreigners have been selling India quite aggressively over the last few months. But very interestingly, the domestic investors in India have been buying that market. And usually the domestic investors in general across emerging markets have a better track record of what's going to happen in their country than foreigners do. So I would back the mm -hmm. domestic over foreign investors any day uh, in terms of their price behavior and their buying in these emerging markets. Rajir, we've got to leave it there. And there are individual country ETFs. For instance, EIDO is Indonesia. And you're right, it's been outperforming. It's only down 5% this year. Rashir Sharma, thank you on emerging Thanks. markets.